All right, CNT 140, we're working on Chapter 5. Uh, we were talking different components of our phone wiring. We had left off roughly at the fasteners of our, of our phone line. They just remind us that different types of fasteners we can use to uh, secure the phone lines when we're installing and roughly the spacing necessary for those. That's what they, that's what they had shown in this graph for us, this chart for us. The other thing they mentioned was the second line phone installation. Um, most homes only ever had a phone line that had one line. Some businesses might have a phone that uh, actually has two lines on you, you. You know, pick up the phone and you hit a line button, line one, line two. If you were installing that, you would worry about using the RJ14 here, the one on the right, where you had the four, uh, the black, red, green, yellow wires that allowed you to handle two phone lines. So that's what they're showing you in this picture. Um, just recognize those colors, black, red, green, yellow, is the traditional color code for your phone line and terminating that. Recognize that. And again, I'm showing you here uh, the, 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 the phone cable, phone jack, and then the pinout, red, your black, red, green, yellow. Uh, and this is actually showing you the line one and line two out here. All right, with small office installations, uh, usually has, you know, if you have a handful of lines, you know, a handful of phones and phone lines, you're usually going to have a small uh, installation of some equipment. And what they showed you was, they showed you this picture in the book, I'll come back to that in a minute, but they showed you this picture in the book showing you the different pieces of your phone system. Well, I'm going to show you this one real quick. In, in even a small office, you would have a small PBX, that's your basically your phone switch, and you'll run a large pair connector um, that goes from there to the side of a 66 block. And that actually takes all the phone lines here that this is able to process and terminates in this block. Now this might be in the basement or the first floor, if you will. And on the second, you know, first floor or second floor of the building, you have all your phones attached to wall outlets and phone wiring back to a 66 block on that floor. What you would then do is use a cross connect wire to go from a phone line up here to a, or I should say a phone up here to a phone line over here. So we would use these cross connect cables. So I would be terminating my phones into this block, terminating the phone lines from the PBX in this block, and I would cross connect here. Um, so this, this is the only, really the only part I'm, uh, punching in or pulling out to make contact from phones to different phone lines. Um, and that's what you were seeing down here. That's the kind of thing they're showing you here. So we have the phone company's line coming in. We have our distribution. We have the PBX coming into here. And they even show us the voicemail module that they have for the phone system. And all this was attached onto a wall. You know, uh, only, you know, maybe a couple of feet wide by a couple of feet wide. Not that large. Not that large of a space. So that's a typical small office installation of a phone system. They remind us about some installation safety. <laughs> um, make sure entrance point is unplugged from the telephone company if you're working on anything. Um, if you're if you're making any outlet connections and so forth, take the handset off. What you're worried about is um, any sort of signal coming in, whether it be a phone call or something like that, coming into your phone, while, phone line while you're working on it. Uh, the phones themselves are being powered from the phone company uh, with 48 volts DC. But the ringing voltage coming in is roughly 100 volts AC, that kind of ballpark. A very low current, but it is a high voltage. Um, so it's enough to give you a little bit of a jolt if you are holding on to those lines in the, if, a, if a ring comes through. They talk about using insulated screwdrivers. Yeah, don't touch the bare contacts or terminals. Yeah, don't work during thunderstorms or surges coming in. Um, install bridge or entrance plug component. You know, that, that's the connection at the uh, the network interface box. I can plug or unplug that as I'm working on things. Uh, install your jacks, run the wire to the jacks, strip them, and then you're, you're kind of working from the phones back to the uh, network interface box. That's what they're talking about with the installation here. Uh, and they actually give you, I don't know, like two pages of steps here for doing installation. Um, okay. With our testing, with our testing, I'm going to zoom over here a little bit. 
with our testing, they remind us of, you know, okay, lift your handset off the phone, plug it into a new outlet, listen for dial tone, dial number. Um, you're trying to work through a couple obvious things that would be wrong. As always, you know, replace the cable from the phone to the wall, try a different phone, those kind of simple things that you would use to troubleshoot almost anything. Uh, yeah, they're actually telling you some of this here. Try plugging in into a different phone, uh, call repair service, check for broken wires, that sort of thing, um, etc. And I can even go to, I didn't put it in here, but I didn't, uh, you can go to the network interface box at the side of a facility. Let me zoom back here real quick. Let me see if I can find it. You can actually go to here, your network interface box, this on the side of your facility. And as you open that door, door here a lot of times there's a plug that I can uh, take my phone here unplug this from the house plug my phone in here and if it works if my phone actually works while I'm plugging in here then I know it's my my wiring inside my facility that's wrong um, that's what that allows you to do that's what this network interface box uh, that's that connection in here I can actually unplug this that'd be my house wiring and plug my phone directly into this port and if it does work then I know it's my facility or my house wiring that's the problem um, that that allows you to do that little little check there um, yeah they, they talk about more insulation checklist make sure you're doing um, these sorts of things. Be sure interest plug is unplugged, attach components securely, run wire, make sure you have a little bit extra for connections, put in your covers, plug in the entrance plug, plug in your phone and test. That's kind of like a, a quick little guideline of, of doing your phone wiring. One of the last things they talk about here is your residential cabling. There is actually a 570 standard um, that, that spells out how residential wiring should be done. Um, and this is derived from your 568 standard. There's a lot of similarities here. Uh, a couple of the highlights that I pulled out is each outlet should be its own little home run. There's no daisy chaining of phone lines anymore like that used to be done. So each phone or phone line is its own home run back to the uh, phone switch or the phone box, if you will. Star topology, they stay have the 100 meters max length for the home run. The recommended category 55E. Uh, and again, the idea there is if you're moving into IP phone, that sort of thing, you have the structure to do it. A position outlet jack should be used, wired in the A configuration. Uh, they're not allowing RJ11s anymore, RJ14s. We should be using the RJ45 A, A position outlet jack. Um, for testing in this, really only the wire map is necessary. I don't need to do any performance testing, but I need at least a wire map to show that it is wired correctly and there's no crossovers or cross pins or anything like that in it. And they show us here on the uh, uh, little, little chart on the page 73, I think it is, showing us the... Uh, the phone, the wiring inside of our house and coming into our distribution, I might actually have a distribution box for these or some sort of patch panel, if you will. You notice they use that term a little bit more loosely because I could bring all my lines, my data, my phone, my computer lines into a patch panel, then connect them to my provider. That's what this is. Um, and this would be the interface box on the side of my house. And they give us kind of a, a rough diagram of how things should be done. Well, let's just start looking a lot like the 568 standard of I have all of my horizontal cable runs back to a, a distribution point, patch panel. Um, and then I can go from there to the various, whether it be phone or internet or whatever it happens to be. That's what, this should, that's what they're wanting you to do, trying to get things more uh, standard. They remind us at the end of the chapter there is other standards out there, the FireWire, iLink, USB, HDMI, DVI, that sort of thing. These are other things that are that have come along, are coming along, that a lot of things rely on and or use. Uh, all standards that are helpful for interconnection of things, uh, whether it be TV, computer, monitors, that whatever happens, wh whatever those happen to be. These are all standard things that are used to make things much more versatile, much more usable. And there is kind of the quick overview of our telephone wiring.